that that is a picture of someone holding one gram of gold I just Google it that's pretty damn small definitely portable definitely small enough to be portable and exchangeable with other people for all those currency and money fallacy believers yeah <laughs> that's what I think of you all who subscribe to the idea of money and currency also I spent a few minutes looking up um, outdated reports of how much gold, silver, copper, and platinum there are estimated and actually calculated to be in bullion at close enough to 100% minted. That's what it is, basically. <clears throat> And this is promising. As far as uh, money goes, something with a, an unchanging value. The numbers exceed for one, two, three out of the four items. For three out of these four items, the numbers exceed the population of the entire planet by a massive margin. If you're giving people, yay, so many grams of gold, silver, and copper. Platinum, not so much. There's only enough to give uh, about 10 million people one gram with enough left over to be actually usable for uh, electronic components, etc., etc. This excludes using it for jewelry. This, this takes jewelry out of the equation entirely. If you crunch the numbers this way, and you, you focus on using it, uh, these precious metals as a form of uh, money or currency globally, calculating for 10 billion population, which it, it's massively over-fucking-counted for a reason. It compensates for future growth which is unlikely because the planet's massively overpopulated anyway, but I included it in there because fuck you. I like to overcalculate shit. I like to overcalculate the outgoing and undercalculate the inbound to compensate financially speaking. That way, I never run out of fallacy credits to go and buy things with. not applicable in reality right now <laughs> especially right now but it's a thing I like to do to make sure that I don't overspend at all ever this is a damn good way to to uh, make sure you don't go get a credit card and fuck over the economy by running up a debt that you can't pay back a damn good way to make sure the individual doesn't do stupid shit like that but anyway enough of that bullshit I gotta digress from that and proceed along with the primary subject matter that I'm speaking of for this whole damn charade <laughs> let's start with copper well I'll start talking and you start listening thereby the let's is inclusive fucking psychology. I hate it when a YouTuber says let's do something and it's just them doing it and everyone else is watching. This is a thought exercise that I'm doing so let's is more appropriate. Right. With copper counting for 10 billion population every individual could be given at birth without earning it 40 
thousand grams of copper to use as money or currency and that would leave uh, let's see how many uh, fucking one two three four five five little uh, commas so that means thousands millions billions trillions quadrillions that would leave two quadrillion four hundred trillion grams of copper for the industry to use in electrical manufacturing or whatever keep in mind this does not include jewelry in this setup in this dystopian outlook and it is dystopian jewelry doesn't exist this is this is currency reset bullshit right here this is how dystopian things are just goes to show you no fucking fashion no fancy jewelry at all. Silver. There's enough to give 10 billion people 60 grams of silver, and that would leave uh, thousands, millions, billions, 1 trillion grams of silver for the industry to use in manufacturing uh, electronic components or whatever. No jewelry. Absolutely none. This is me catering to everyone's fallacy of a fucking rock you dig out of the ground having value when it, that's a fallacy. That's a lie. That's an axiom that you believe, but it doesn't exist. This takes jewelry off the table entirely. No more fucking earrings made out of sterling silver or any type of silver. No fucking rings on your fingers, no necklaces, nothing. No chandeliers, no candles, candlesticks, no fucking bowls made out of silver, no, no fucking silverware made out of silver, so it'll become uh, stainless steelware. No more nothing outside of, you know, a little gram to use as a form of currency and money and whatever the industry needs to manufacture pieces for electronic equipment and whatnot. And then that has to be recycled once it's finished being used. That has to be recycled so that it can be used for another computer component or an electronic component. Again, this takes jewelry out of the equation completely. Your girl's not going to be happy about that, guys not happy at all because now now we're going to talk about how much gold gold i keep looking down because i wrote all this stuff out see all this uh all this bullshit text and numbers that's a lot of fucking numbers ain't it i'm having to look at this because i'm not going to bother memorizing it because i'm going to move the fuck on after i'm done with this video because this is a stupid fucking idea to reset your bullshit fallacy currency because you're too stupid to grow past it. Same thing goes for if you base an all digital currency on the value of gold, silver, copper, platinum. You have to have a fucking reserve for that in case somebody says, hey yeah, I want my fucking physical money. Elseways, whoever you are thinking about making an all digital currency, all you're going to do is piss off a lot of people and you're going to have a fucking world war over it. All because you think something has value, but it doesn't. Gold. There's enough gold to give 10 billion people one gram each at birth without earning it. Without exchange for foul value or anything this is what I've calculated base at for circulation and this would leave 
161,300,000 grams for the manufacturing industry to use in components for machinery, tech, electronics, etc. No jewelry. Absolutely fucking none. No jewelry. All those fucking gold chains around your neck. All those damn rings. No jewelry at all. See how dystopian this is? No enjoyment of the luxury of the rock being an adornment. No fucking luxury there. This is what you fucking humanity jackasses are fucking pushing. This is the dystopia that you're pushing for. Because you're too stupid to grow beyond the use of currency and money as a training tool to train you to think about how to manage your fucking resources. You're too stupid. You're too ignorant. You're too dumb. You're too naive. And then you've branched off. You know, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to save that for after we talk about platinum. And this is going to be a really fucking one-sided discussion. Platinum. All of these still using outdated measurements. Because, you know, as continuance progresses, they're going to find more. So if you use the outdated ones, it makes sure that the calculations are solid. Platinum. This is the exception from the 10 billion population. There is only enough platinum to give 10 million people one gram each. And that would leave 188,450,000 grams for manufacturing. No platinum jewelry, no gold jewelry, no silver jewelry, no copper jewelry bare bones minimum that's a lot of fucking no jewelry going around isn't it all because you jackass humans can't manage your fucking resources you rely on other people to think for you and you've branched your economics idealism of fallacy of value and interchangeability and exchangeability and fungibility and portability you've branched off into so many different bullshit theories and ideals of how money and currency work you know, let me quote something for you Christians many branched and endless are the ideas and paths of an idiot Yet a wise man will focus on a single idea. You've got all these different fucking bullshit ideas about how economics work, how money and currency work. Literally, you have dozens of them because you're fucking morons according to your own religious texts. Hell, even if you look at it from a militaristic point of view, having billions of fucking ideas don't mean shit until you start building on the plan. The plan requires an idea to be agreed on as viable for the task at hand. How many of these ideas of economics are viable in the real world outside of money and currency? Because just look at it. It has no value. In the real world, you focus on resource management. You focus on getting what you need done before you focus on pleasure and, and fucking joy. 
you focus on getting what you need done. In the real world, all these bullshit ideas of economics have no fucking viability. They're useless. Absolutely fucking garbage. Think about it this way. Are you studying economics just so that you can go shop at a grocery store? Are you studying economics when you cook your food to eat it? Are you studying economics when you take a shit? Or when you go and plant a garden? Are you studying economics then? Fuck no. How the fuck does economics apply to anything outside of the fake idea of money, currency, and value. It doesn't, does it? How does it apply to the real world? To you socializing with your friends and family? How does it apply there? How does economics apply there legitimately? I'm not talking about you sitting around talking about it. That, that, that's not an application. That's a discussion. That's a thought, an idea. It's a many-branched and endless path. It's not solid or viable. Seriously. Economics is like mathematics. You'll learn so many different forms of math in school. Addition, subtraction, which are counterparts to one another. Multiplication, division, same deal there. Exponents, square roots, same deal there. Trigonometry, algebra, calculus. How many of those damn things do you use outside of school? Do you use trigonometry or calculus? You know, if you're in a woodwork shop building things, you know, if you're going to build a table or a chair, nah, I don't think you'll use trigonometry or algebra. I mean, you may use a component of it, which is measuring degrees off of a circle. That's one component. That's not algebra or trigonometry. Same fucking deal with economics. You may use one component of economics, such as counting the money for when you go to buy groceries or make a purchase. And hell, with the automation of credit cards and debit cards going directly to your bank account, you don't even use addition and subtraction. You're not using economics. You're not even using a fucking fragment of economics in the real world. What use is it in it even existing if you're not going to fucking use it? Same deal with advanced mathematics. If you're not going to use it in your daily life, why the fuck learn it in school? Why the fuck have this thing called economics when it, it's a fallacy? Ancient Romans did it. It didn't work for them. Now you're doing the same damn thing. Now I'm telling you, your currency reset, This all this that I've written down, this is what it looks like. This is what your currency reset looks like. It's the same damn thing that the Romans started with, that the Greeks had. And keep in mind, one of those two groups made what you now use as the word fallacy. It was a literal physical object. It was a dick sculpturette with wings on it. That's what a fallacy is. They thought it protected them, but it didn't. That's what the word fallacy now means. A lie. To put it in its most blunt terminology, fallacy now means a blatant fucking lie. Economics is a fallacy. Value is a fallacy. It's a lie. Why do you subscribe to this bullshit? Why do you believe in this currency reset? 
Why do you believe in currency, money, and value at all? So there, I wrote it all out. Gold, silver, and copper, there's enough for 10 billion people to have one gram or more. Especially with copper. Hmm. I think the next discussion will be setting the value for each of these four materials and their interchangeability. Well, till next time. Fuck off. Oh, yeah. Speaking of uh, value, money, and currency fallacy, there's links in the description so you can throw some fallacy my way. And yeah, I said it that way just to fuck with your delicate sensibilities, you little snowflake bitches. Fuck off till next time. <laughs>